I started my growth operating journey not long ago, about three months ago. And I struggled. The first struggle was to understand the niche and to understand what it is in the first place. So I had a couple of wrong ideas, wrong conceptions about it, because I thought that it was only about a paid community and that was wrong. You can actually contact a content, content creator and basically pitch him a high ticket program. You can do the funnels for him. You can basically hack, uh, funnel hack other creators in his niche and then bring him the same plan, right? And like the, the thing that I found myself doing is that I kept doing that in a way that was very systematic, right? And being systematic isn't what I was looking for. When I say, no, when I say systematic, I mean being too robotic about it. That was me at first, right? And don't get me wrong, I've got a VA, she's working for me. Because I live in Algeria and having a VA is very affordable, right? So it's like, it's like $100 a month, right? She just does four hours of work a day. She's flexible with her work. So that's not even a big problem. But sometimes I do the outreach myself and it's kind of frustrating, right? <clears throat> but I pinned it down. So the outreach, now I understand it better that I am 90% confident that I'm going to get the next creator because I know how to do it now, right? I might make a video about it. And I got, I actually didn't, I actually got... Uh, I actually spoke to one guy. I was in Sri Lanka. I spoke to one guy. Um, he does uh, cargo trailers, etc. off grid. I spoke about it in one of the past videos and he said yes for a setup fee. Then he bailed on me. Right. Then I hopped on a call with this psychologist. Right. She's a known psychologist. Uh, she's Irish, etc. She was cool. We spoke for, for a long time, etc. And actually the way I kind of close. I thought I closed it at the time, but I didn't actually close it. She said yes, she agreed to work, $1,000 down payment, meaning set up fee, and then I create her paid community. But the story, I'm even embarrassed to tell it, to say it. <laughs> it's crazy how, how this story is going to come about. <laughs> Basically, when I was about to close her, right, I, had, I was in Sri Lanka, and I don't know what was wrong with the food, but I ate something spicy, very spicy. I ate shawarma with tahini spicy sauce. And then my belly started reacting to it. Then guess what I did? I added some yogurt to it. Like uh, hours later, but I was like, before the call, 15 minutes or 10 minutes before the call, I got some yogurt. I drank a couple, a couple of, uh, a couple of um, small bottles of yogurt. Then... <laughs> I went on the call and during the call, I kid you not, I was in agony, mate. I was, bro, I was feeling my anus kind of like kind of shooting fire, man. I, it was becoming like a dragon there, right? Fire, man. It was so painful in my belly. And then I would get, you know, when you're about to forgive, forgive me to say this because, because I must be honest with you. You know the feeling that you get when you're about to take a shit and then you you hold yourself because you can't go to the bathroom and then it starts poking at your intestines and then it's like someone is putting a knife inside of you. That's how I was feeling throughout the whole call. The call was about one hour, 30, 40 minutes. And then she was like talking to me. She was sharing. She was oversharing, to be honest. And then right at the end, she was like, okay, she was like, what's the, what's the financial part? I was like, okay, $1,000 and 25% revenue, right? Revenue share. And then she was like thinking, she was like, yeah, but why? And then she, she was like asking more questions. And at that moment, I don't know what happened. I think it was stress, right? I couldn't hold it. <laughs> and I was sitting on this chair and I actually took a shit, man. I couldn't. I took a shit and she was talking. <laughs> so embarrassing, man. She was talking to me. I took a shit and then I closed the deal, supposedly, right? She was like happy. I told, she told me, send me, a, uh, send me a, um, an invoice for the wise transfer. I don't have a Stripe yet, so I have a, an invoice transfer. 
uh, and a wise transfer, sorry. And then she was like, yeah, send it to me and everything. And then, yeah, so, so I, took a, I took a shit that day. And I was like, fuck, man, that's embarrassing. I went to my business partner, told him this story. He was like, yeah, my business partner is one of the coolest guys ever. Uh, I'm the bad person in, the, in our partnership because I'm the one who gets angry easily, etc. And he's like the one who's more level-headed. So he was like, yeah, man, it's okay. He understands that because he's a successful entrepreneur, more successful than I am. So he understood that, yeah, sometimes you have to go through that. And this is a story. When I make, when I make, when I make my... 10k a month, 100k a month. I'm going to say I'm going to tell this story to everybody, man, because this is one of those stories that's going to give you the um give you meaning to the whole journey, right? Even though it's a hard journey, difficult ups and downs. Woo! Crazy, man. And then she woke up the the next day, that woman, she was like, "Yeah, I don't think uh, you know, she was like, "Yeah, um, I, I think I should take some time to work on it. And there's some bullshit like that. She was clearly lying, basically, right? This is what they do. They lie. So, yeah, so uh, that's the story, man. And then what happened is, like, I kept doing outreach, came back to Algeria. It was Ramadan. I'm a Muslim, right? In Ramadan, we don't eat from sunrise to sun to sun um, down, right? Uh, to sunset, sorry. So it was like... Perfect. I would say perfect moment, but Ramadan is 30 days and on the, te the last 10 days, uh, it's very tiring, right? It's very, very tiring. You, your body gets really tired, you're focused, you, you will have brain fog, etc. So it's pretty tough. Uh, so I wasn't very productive during that period, but I was doing outreach. And then I did out and, and then I'm, my friends tell me that I'm always ahead of my game. And the way I, the, what they mean by that is that I know when something is going to trend and I know when someone is going to grow. So I was like, I looked at this YouTuber who was doing looks maxing and, uh, and uh, fitness and healthy eating, etc. And he had 5,000 on YouTube. And I was like, okay, this guy is going to grow. And then within a week, he reached 15K, right? 15k 10k 15k now he's on 20k right 21k and then i messaged him he replied to me he was like nice about it and then i told him hey man this is what i do basically i want to we, we can launch a like a high ticket or a low ticket we're going to figure it out after the market research etc and then he told me he told me yeah okay uh no no no, no. sorry sorry what am, I, what am I about he said Nothing, basically. He just saw the message. And then I followed up again, ruthlessly, every day for about, I don't know, five, four to five days. And then he replied. And he was like, yeah, man, but, um, you know, why would, why would I need someone to help me? So I sent him a vocal message. And I and told him and I explained to him that the biggest um, content creators focus only on content creation. Because that's what brings the traffic in. And they have a growth operator or whatever they, you want to call it. Someone who helps them, who partners up with them to help them bring the money in. Right? To help them take care of the systems and the AI automations and the, and the, the Google Sheets, etc. Blah, 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 blah. And then, and then he was like, yeah, but I don't want to do it in a salesy way. And I was like, of course, man. That's why I want to help hop on, hop on a call with you to see if maybe we can find another angle to bring it in. And then I sold him, right? We hopped on a call. He was so happy about it. And then, boom, he told me, send the, send the, um, the contract. So I sent it and he ghosted me for three days. You know how down I felt those three days? How painful that was because I thought I had already done doing outreach and then he ghosted me then after ghosting me for three days on the third day I understood man he was posting and not sending me not like basically he, he checked the messages and I was following up with him he didn't see he didn't say nothing he just left me on scene which I think was disrespectful <sighs> that, that's very disrespectful right I wouldn't do that to someone, to be honest. It's not something that I would do uh, if I want to be like a, a respected person as he is, as he portrays himself, right? But anyways, this is what happens in this, uh, in this field. And so what I did, I was so sad. So I laid down, like feeling sorry about myself. And I was telling myself, man, why is this happening to me? I was basically butthurt. Why is this happen, happening to me? Why am I like this? 
oh, it was so annoying, man. And then I was like, I remembered that chop would carry water, right? You know the story of this guy uh, who, um, who was, I'm not really sure of the right story, but the moral is really good. It was basically this guy who was training to become a monk, a Buddhist monk. And then basically he became a Buddhist monk and he went to this temple with a lot of Buddhist monks. And then he was like, you know, praying, etc. And then he asked them, he asked them, he was like, okay, what's special about the Buddhist monks, um, like in, who, in, who were enlightened, of course, what's special about their lifestyle? And then one Buddhist monk asked him, he was like, what were you doing before, before uh, becoming enlightened? He was like, yeah, I was like chopping wood and carrying water every day. And he was like, yeah, man. He was like, you're going to do the same thing. Chop wood, carry water. Before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. That's crazy, right? So I was like, it basically portrays, portrays the concept of you. no matter how you feel, you need to be like a robot and repeat the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again. Just like a machine, just like a machine that works. Like you, you just robot, like your hands should be detached from your, your imagination, your emotions, right? Your feelings, they should be detached. Your body should be detached from it, right? During your warrior phase. And that means a lot, right? That's me. That means a lot. Makes, that made a lot of sense at that moment. I remember that. I directly stood up, man. Directly stood up. Did some sourcing, screenshots of content creators on YouTube. And then I kept doing outreach, kept doing outreach, kept doing outreach. That day, tomorrow, the next day, the day after, I got a reply from this guy. Literally the day after, he said, hey, man, that's really interesting. He's like, He's like, I already have a paid community, but I would like to work, partner up with someone who can help me do like a mid ticket or a high ticket. And he was like, boom, he's really big in the looks maxing, fitness modeling, uh, modeling uh, sp space, right? And then he was like, boom, 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 signed the contract, started working, right? Had, um, I had a bit of a, a difficult phase when it comes to market research. He took some time to give me access to his to his Instagram, etc. And yeah, so that's, I'm going to tell you the story of this because I failed basically, right? I, I failed. I don't know if it's my fault or his fault. Of course, I want to take responsibility of every, for, for everything, but he didn't do what I told him, right? He didn't do what I told him. Um, and yeah, man. Yeah. This is another video. I'm going to film another video. I'll go to the park and film another video. Um, you're going to see my the park that I film at. It's, it was the first spot that I ever started filming um, in, right? It's uh, really interesting. So yeah, after this, I'm going to film a video explaining why I failed and what you can learn from me. And the next video, or the video before, after that, I'm going to do my out, outreach strategy because I know how to get clients now. I haven't made much money from it. No, I haven't made money from, uh, from out, growth operating anymore um, as of yet. But I know how to do outreach now. I know how to start outreach. And within max 15 days, I'll get a client or two. All right? <sighs> yeah. But basically, I'm starting working with another, with another creator. And I'll tell you about it in another video. So, yeah. This is, my, um, this is what I have to, to share about it. Yeah. Cheers, man. Thank you.